make their voices heard this midterm election. Now, all eyes are on results. I'm excited and energized. The momentum is palpable. From candidates for governor. Thank people for voting. Going terrific. We've had a great three weeks. To candidates in the 5th District. I feel good. I feel good. I'm excited. The enthusiasm. People are out to vote. It's an opportunity of a, of a lifetime. We've got you covered as the numbers start coming in. Polls are now closed, but if you're in line, stay in line. Your vote will still be counted. Our continued coverage of the midterm elections starts now. And it is 8 o'clock. Good evening. I'm Ben Goldman. And I'm Jen Bernstein. Thank you so much for joining us on Fox 61 Plus uh, for our continued coverage on election night here. We have live team coverage all night long. Our reporters out all across the state following all the big races tonight from the governor's race, U.S. Senate race, and 5th Congressional District race as well. It is now 8 p.m., 8.01 to be exact, and that means that polling stations are closed. If you are in line, though, that doesn't mean you don't get to vote. People won't be able to join the line, but you'll have an opportunity to cast your ballots. Don't get out of line. Let's start this new broadcast out with a starting off check of one of the most important races tonight, incumbent Governor Ned Lamont facing Republican challenger Bob Stefanowski now for the second time. Fox 61's political reporter Emma Wolforst is live at Dunkin' Donuts Park in Hartford, where Governor Lamont is joining other state Democratic candidates for what they hope is a victory party. Hey, Emma. Hey, Jen and Ben, like you mentioned, polls just closing now across the state. And the mood is definitely picking up here at Dunkin' Donuts Park. Doors opened about an hour ago at 7 p.m. And in that last hour and in the last half hour since I last spoke to you, a lot more guests have arrived. The mood very energetic, very excited, very anxious here as those candidates will eventually start showing up. We've been told some may be here already, but we have haven't seen anyone come out yet. Last time we caught up with Lamont was when he was casting his vote this morning. He told us then that he's feeling good heading into tonight, feeling confident in the polls. He sustained a double-digit point lead over Republican challenger Bob Stefanowski. But as you mentioned, a rehash of 2018 here. These two candidates going head-to-head -head once again. We'll be staying here and staying on this race and all those other big races with these Democratic candidates. And and we'll let you know as soon as we hear something. The band still going behind me, but a little bit quieter than they were about 30 minutes ago. So we'll check back in once we know more. And hopefully once we get to speak to some of these candidates as results start coming in. For now, I'm live at Hartford, Emma Wolf Horst, Fox 61 News. Emma, thank you very much. And breaking news right here now with the polls closed, we are hearing that the Associated Press is calling the race for U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal. Yeah, Blumenthal continuing his service here in Connecticut. He, of course, was challenging uh, Republican Leora Levy, who won the nomination here, a Trump-endorsed candidate, both from Greenwich. Uh, a big win for Blumenthal. A lot of people were, were kind of wondering where this race was going to go. Polling obviously had Blumenthal sure. ahead of, but, uh, ahead of uh, Levy leading into tonight, but it was, it was closer than a lot of people thought it was going to be. The, those polls showing a double-digit lead for Senator Blumenthal, but the big question was, you know, how accurate were those polls? And I would love to see, if we could, um, the precincts that are reporting and what we have. But at first, I'm told we are going to go to Gabby Molina. She's covering the governor's race right now, and then we'll go back to the U.S. Senate race. Gabby is in Trumbull right now at a Bob Stefanowski watch party. So tell us what the feeling is there, Gabby. I know that he just spoke to the press a little while ago. What do you have to say, Gabby? Yeah, Jen and Ben, we just heard from Bob Stefanowski just moments before they kind of let the public into this room. So things are really just getting started here tonight. But Bob Stefanowski said that he is feeling excited about tonight. He said he stopped by many different polling locations across the state and said that he got a chance to speak to some of the voters, talked about some of the things that he's been talking about during his campaign this whole time, safety, inflation. He made promises during his campaign to cut taxes and to maybe tap into the state's rainy day fund as well. Now, we did ask him, you know, in 20 2018 things uh, did not go his way. He did lose to Governor Ned Lamont, but he said this time he feels like he has a much broader platform. And again, the polls just closed, but he did say that from what he's hearing so far, they have had big turnout in key areas, according to him. We did ask Stefanowski, you know, this is a GOP watch party tonight. I asked him how he's feeling about it, and he said he's feeling good. You see a trend towards Republicans nationally over the last two, three weeks. I think people are fed up with inflation. Um, they're fed up with lack of support of law enforcement. They're fed up with crime. 
and Connecticut's been under Democratic control for 40 years now. We've had 12 years of a Democratic governor. People want to change in direction, and again, the best way to do that is to change governors, at least try something different. So again, things are really just getting started here. This is a watch party for uh, a bunch of Republican candidates here at the Trumbull Marriott. So we're going to stay on top of things. Polls are closed. So now is really when we are going to be very, very closely watching these numbers come in. So stay with Fox 61 for live updates throughout this election night. Live in Trumbull, Gabby Molina, Fox 61 News. All right, Gabby, keep us updated. The polls just closed. And unless you were already in line, the votes are starting to get tallied in the hotly contested race for U.S. Senate. Which was just called by the Associated Press for incumbent Senator Richard Blumenthal, Fox 61's Matt Karen, joining us live from Dunkin' Donuts Park in Hartford with the Blumenthal campaign. Matt. Yeah, hi, hi guys. We're here live at Dunkin' Donuts Park, and we're learning this information just as you guys are, that the Associated Press is calling this race for incumbent Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal uh, defeating his uh, Republican challenger, Leora Levy. And joining me right now is the chairwoman of the Connecticut Democratic Party, Nancy DiNardo. I appreciate you being here. I know you got to go. It's a, a busy night, but just sort of react here. We're all learning this news. Dick Blumenthal winning a third term. Well, well, I expected the senator to win the third term. He's done a great job, not only now as senator, but as our attorney general, and he's well known throughout the state. So I'm not surprised, but what surprises me, you know, polls have been closed, what, five minutes? Yeah. And it's already been called. I think that's wonderful. And it certainly is a tribute to the job that he has done. All right, I appreciate you joining us. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy enough. So we're going to continue to follow this. We are hearing from the Blumenthal campaign that Senator Chris Murphy, his colleague in government, is going to be introducing Senator Blumenthal for his victory speech here at the podium behind me. That should be in about 20 minutes or so. Chris Murphy has been out at the polls all day long with Senator Blumenthal. Uh, campaigning alongside him, he even tweeted out a picture of Senator Blumenthal actually FaceTiming with a voter's mother to try and encourage her to come out and vote. Uh, and now, of course, we do know and can confirm that according to exit polls, which were likely the deciding factor in this early decision that the Associated Press has called the race for Senator Dick Blumenthal, the incumbent Democrat, 76 years old, serves on the very powerful Judiciary Committee. So again, that is breaking news just coming in. We're learning these details just as you are, and we're going to be bringing you the victory speech as soon as it happens here on the podium behind us. Uh, certainly a lot of very positive, optimistic energy in the room, especially for the Blumenthal campaign. For now, we're live here at Dunkin' Donuts Park in Hartford. Matt Karen, Fox 61 News. Matt, thank you. This would be the third six-year term for Senator Richard Blumenthal. Well, of course, tracking all the vote totals coming in as big races come into our newsroom, a lot of numbers aren't really in quite yet. Though. No, I mean, only 808 here. Fox 61's Keith McGilvery is at the big board right now with a look at those results as they're coming in. And Keith, you aren't seeing numbers yet, right? We aren't, but I want to pick up on that breaking news that the Associated Press has called this race a third term for Senator Dick Blumenthal, West Renfro political science professor at Quinnipiac University, joining us now. For folks who are joining us on 61 Plus or streaming right now, they're saying, hey, I'm seeing this board. Nothing has come in. Zero percent reporting. How are we in a position at 8 o'clock on the dot that this race is already being called for the senator? Yeah, so it's multi-factor. They look at a bunch of different bits of evidence, including exit polls, the fundamentals of the race, the demographics, some polling. I will say that this is not in any sense a, a, a legal victory, but the AP has a really phenomenal track record of accuracy, including 100 percent accuracy. Accuracy in 2020. All right, so I want to address those skeptics, folks at home who may say polls can say a lot of things. Polls have been wrong before. We're pretty confident, the AP anyways, in this. Yeah, you know, they're looking at more than just polls. There's a, a, a number of factors that go into this. You know, polls can be wrong. Uh, it's extraordinarily rare for polls to be wrong when there's this much of a gap. All right, for folks who are joining us for the first time on streaming, if we kind of dig into this race a little bit, Leora Levy, she got the endorsement that she wanted from former President Trump. Uh, she won the nomination of her party here in Connecticut over some who may have been considered more mainstream Republican. Could someone else have fared better in this race? You know, 
incumbent in a place like Connecticut, especially somebody with the name recognition and long history as Senator Blumenthal, are very, very difficult to beat. I think other Republicans could have done better, but very skeptical that he would be unseated. All right, so we have heard this news from the Associated Press. Another big race that we are following uh, tonight is the governor's race. We anticipate results coming in shortly. Do you anticipate that some of these other races could be called relatively quickly? Yeah, I think it's quite likely that certainly in the governor's race there will be an early call. Uh, all right, and uh, that is that. I should point out while I have you that we are also following kind of this national picture throughout the night, Senate uh, and the House of Representatives here. What are your thoughts on how these chambers end up? You know, this is a really hard to predict election. I feel pretty good that the Republicans are going to do well in the House. The Senate is anybody's guess. There are some early races that we can look at, including the senatorial race in New Hampshire. That might tell us something about how the rest of the country is looking. All right, I want to go back to the Senate race as we go back to the desk. I know we have a guest who may have some thoughts on whether or not another challenger to Senator Blumenthal may have fared better here. Indeed, Keith and Wes, thank you. We'll be getting to those guests in just a moment. But before we do that, challenger to Senator Blumenthal, Leora Levy, made her final push for votes as she made her way around the state earlier today. Yeah, Fox 61's Tony Black is live in Trumbull right now at her campaign headquarters with more. Tony, with the news that we just heard, what's the feel in the room and what are you hearing and seeing? Yeah, you guys, I have to be honest, I don't know if that news has hit this room just yet. I did hear a table behind my shoulder here mention it, but besides that, I'll just give you guys a, gl a glimpse at what we're looking at at the GOP watch party here in Trumbull. I don't really know if that news uh, has hit this room just yet. We have not seen Lior Levy just yet. Um, we did see Bob Stefanowski probably about half an hour ago, but again, we have not seen Levy yet. Uh, as you mentioned, the AP calling this race as a victory for Richard Blumenthal, her competitor. Um, she said she wanted to unseat him because she heard from voters that they were just not happy and were ready for a change in leadership. I caught up with her um, a little bit earlier today as she was uh, sort of giving her final message to voters in Oxford. She at the time said that she was feeling cautiously optimistic. She said that people had been receptive to her and were grateful that she was running. She asked people to vote for her as if their children's lives depended on that. And she was running to make life affordable and safe again. The candidate said that her opponent, Richard Blumenthal, who the AP has calling as the victor in this race is not addressing issues like those and addressing problems at the border like human trafficking and fentanyl. Now, Levy, as you mentioned, received former President Donald Trump's endorsement, which helped her secure the spot to go against Blumenthal. Many voiced concerns about getting that endorsement in a historically blue state, but she said that it was her name and her views on the ballot. This is her first run for office, but the Cuban immigrant has been involved in the political field before. She was a part of Bob Stefanowski's campaign for governor in 2018. Now, Levy says the current government wastefully spending money contributing to high inflation. Here's what she told us earlier today. I've been telling them that I am running to bring back common sense policies, policies that will make their lives better again, because voters know they don't have to live this way. We don't have to live this way. Life can be better again. It can be normal again. I want something new, new, fresh, new, fresh face, new, fresh ideas. And I want the economy turning in a better direction than where it's going right now. So some of those voters I was speaking with in Oxford uh, say that they wanted her to fill this position because of the economy. That was the biggest reason that they voted for her today. I also heard that she got votes because of her uh, her views on uh, pro-life abortion. She said instances being rape, incest, and the life of the mother. But again, I haven't really seen a shift in attitude here uh, since the AP called that race in uh, favor of Blumenthal. Again, we have not seen or heard from Lior Levy just yet. We are waiting for that. It's unsure uh, when she will come out to to the GOP watch party tonight, but we will be here throughout the night and bring you any live updates as we get them. Live in Trumbull, Tony Black, Fox 61 News. All right, Tony, thank you. And if you're just joining us, we already are hearing of our very first race called here in Connecticut, the Associated Press declaring Senator Richard Blumenthal the winner of the U.S. Senate race defeating Republican candidate Leora Levy to get another term, a third term which will last six years here in Connecticut. Our live coverage continues breaking down these big races and the issues here in Connecticut. And joining us right now, former candidate for Connecticut Attorney General Chris Maddy, as well as former House Republican leader and former U.S. Senate candidate Themis Claritas. Thank you both so much for joining us here. Uh, Got to get to you, Themis, of course. You know, you poured a lot of time and effort into the primary here. Your reaction to the result that we're hearing from the Associated Press right now, are you surprised at the result? 
We've all seen the polls for the past many months, and we've seen Senator Blumenthal not only uh, maintaining his lead, but even increasing it a little bit. And I think, you know, going back to what we talked about a little earlier, it's Connecticut. We have to focus on what voters in Connecticut want, not what different states in the, in the country. And when you, when you nominate somebody to run as your party's nominee, you have to make sure that that person not just is somebody that represents a certain view, but somebody who can win the election. Sure. Right? And unfortunately, I don't think that, that Leora's perspective, um, and it is certainly her right to have, but her perspective did, does not seem to be what the Connecticut voters were interested in, and that's why I don't think they wanted to make a change. And, you know, we could talk about that Trump endorsement for a while tonight, but I want to go to Chris. What do you think were the issues that were bringing so many voters out to support Senator Blumenthal, support an incumbent? A lot of people, the criticism against him was that he's been in office for so long and everyone wanted to see a change and a fresh face. Apparently more people disagreed with that viewpoint. Well, I think the problem is people know Senator Blumenthal so well and like him. I mean, he's been uh, in public service in the state for decades. He's got a well-earned reputation for fighting for Connecticut families. He continued to do that in the Senate. I mean, he's been one of our most articulate voices on why the threat of a radical Supreme Court is so real. And on the other side, you have a relative newcomer who really embraced Donald Trump and his extreme positions really engaged in some divisive rhetoric that I think a lot of people just thought was a turnoff. So, you know, the main issue in this race, it seems to me, was just having a really steady hand in Senator Blumenthal, who's proven himself over the years to be a great public servant here in Connecticut. Thomas, I'm cu curious of your opinion on closed primaries, because that's kind of why we are in this situation. Someone who's more fiscally conservative as yourself, more socially moderate as a Republican, kind of gets wedged out. Uh, is what we saw during the primary. Is that something that we need to look at as a state? I think we definitely do. I mean, and this has been a conversation that's been going on for several years on the Republican and Democrat side. You know, I think we really need to consider open primaries in this state so people uh, have the right to vote and nominating who's going to go up in November during an election because you have to remember that almost half of the registered voters in Connecticut are unaffiliated voters. And, those, and I know the argument is, well, you should, if you registered a party, you can vote in a primary. But, but what's going forward in this state and many other states is a large amount of people are unaffiliated voters, especially in the Northeast and, you know, in different parts of the country. Um, and they should have a voice in this because what happens, you will end up having a very small percentage of registered voters nominating somebody. Right. You know, we're sitting here in Connecticut, and, and we mentioned last hour that there are, this conversation of moderate Republicans and, and maybe moving more toward the center isn't happening across the country in all these different states. But in our state, as one of the leading Republican voices in Connecticut for many years, with, with the new movement to the, to the MAGA-endorsed candidates that are popping up all across the country, where do you see the Republican Party in Connecticut going in the future, especially with this news that a Trump-endorsed candidate didn't win? Do you think that we're going to continue to see these candidates popping up in the next couple of years, or do you think it might move back to more of a moderate side? Well, first, we need to see what the results are tonight. I mean, we have one one race in, and I think it'll be very interesting and, and necessary to figure out uh, what the answer to that question is. Do I think it's going to go away tomorrow? No, because former President Trump would like to run again. And he's going to make an announcement in, of, in some way, shape, or form soon, and we're going to see what that announcement is sooner than later. You know, there will always be people that believe that you're either for Trump or against Trump. I'm a Connecticut Republican. You know, I've served in this state for many years, and I believe in common se a common sense approach. I believe in smaller government. I believe in lower taxes. You know, I believe in people making decisions on their own. And that's really what we, we believe in in Connecticut as Republicans. So whether you support him or you don't support him, you know, I think is unfortunately a sad commentary because it's about what do you think is best for Connecticut. Chris, your opinion on the potential for President Trump to run, does that actually help you all in this election, the threat of that? Well, I, look, President Trump is, is going to do what he decides to do, and whatever he decides to do, he is going to have the full support of the Republican Party behind him. There is no other personality in Republican politics that dominates that party the way he has. He's radicalized it. Um, and, you know, to be candid, uh, if President Trump is at the top of the ticket, it's going to be a wipeout for Republicans here in Connecticut. And it probably gives Democrats the best chance of holding on to the White House because uh, people, I think most people, unaffiliated voters, 
reasonable-minded Republicans really do want to turn the page on that brand of politics, uh, not only the divisive nature, but the mismanagement of our relationships overseas, um, the poisoning of misinformation throughout our body politic, the support of an insurrection. That's not something that our country, I believe, is going to go for. But because uh, Donald Trump wants to be at the center of attention, he's likely going to continue to hijack the Republican Party. All right, we want to move along here. All eyes, especially on the 5th Congressional District. Voters tonight getting to decide who they want in that seat. Yeah, will it be Democratic incumbent Johanna Hayes or her opponent, Republican George Logan? We want to head out to Fox 61's Carmen Chow, who is keeping tabs on the outcome there. Carmen. And Jen, this is the race where it's really tough to say who's going to win. Votes can come in favoring one candidate, but that scale can be tipped easily as we're seeing support on both parties. Now, the latest poll released by the Hill Survey, WTNH, and Emerson College has showed Logan has a one point lead over Johanna Hayes, but keep in mind there was also a percentage of undecided voters. Voters identifying the economy as the most important issue in determining their votes, followed by abortion and threats to. To democracy. Both candidates favor a woman's right to an abortion as is currently guaranteed by state law and Hayes favors a similar federal law while Logan feels otherwise. It's crazy. I was thinking about that yesterday. I was with a group of Waterbury people at Frankie's and these were many of the same people that were there when we found out I was teacher of the year. So to have just it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I think the, big, the biggest part, there was a little girl. The number of kids who know who their congressperson is for me is, <laughs> I didn't know who my congressperson was when I was in third grade. Now, polls have officially closed, and these two doors behind me are set to open in roughly 10 minutes, where many of her supporters will be gathering. I'm live in Waterbury. Carmen Chow, Fox 61 News. All right, Carmen, thank you very much. Staying on the fifth congressional race that's catching national attention, Fox 61's Dandrea Turner continuing our live team coverage in Waterbury and how Republican candidate George Logan winning is a key to the Republicans winning back control in the U.S. House of Representatives. Deandrea, what's the scene in Waterbury like? Well, you guys, we're actually at George Logan's watch party where people are starting to pile in. His watch party is set to start here at 8.30, so just a few minutes now. But if Logan does win, it could swing it in favor for the Republicans. If he wins, he'll be the first Republican congressman elected in Connecticut for in 13 years. Logan is Logan and his Democratic opponent, incumbent Johanna Haynes, are locked in a tight race here for the 5th Congressional District as it stretches along much of the I-84 corridor and the western part of the state. And all eyes are on this race because of the power balance in the U.S. of the House of Representatives is slim. And a Logan win could swing it in favor for the Republicans. And like I said, his watch party starts in less than 10 minutes. And people and his supporters here, they're hoping for a win tonight. In Waterbury, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61 News. All righty, DeAndrea, thank you very much. We'll be sure to check in all night as those results keep coming in. But right now, we want to toss it over to somebody who's having a more relaxing election night here, who's led many elections here in the state, former Secretary of the State of Connecticut, Denise Merrill, joining Jen. Hi, Jen. Thank you, Ben. This is a little more relaxing for you. You're not in charge for once. Uh, what's it like just kind of watching the election from your point of view right now? Oh, it's great, actually. Uh, I can uh, sit on my couch and uh, make comments about everything. So right, it's, exactly. it's nice. Yeah, popcorn and all. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about what's happening right now across the state. You have done many elections. Yes. at this point. Yes. Uh, polls are closed, and so everyone is vote, uh, counting those votes in their different respective towns. It takes time for results to come in. Right. Give us, a, give us a look behind the curtain. And there's always a question about why it takes so long, so I'm about to tell you. Okay. Uh, because, of course, in the last couple of years, we've had a lot more absentee ballots filed ever since COVID, when we made some exceptions about that. So that takes some time to count, particularly in the cities. The small towns will be able to do it pretty quickly. But as soon as the polls close, they are not allowed to open those absentee ballots until after the polls close, first of all. So now that there's so many of them, they have to close the machines, they have to announce the machine results, they have to tally all the figures and then get that all organized. Then they usually, in most towns, go to town hall to count absentee ballots. Wow. Okay. So they can't even start until they get to town hall. I'm thinking around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. So how many absentee ballots are we talking about? 
I know oh. you don't know specifically, but in past years, what's what are we what are we thinking is happening this year? Normally in Connecticut, there's about five percent of all votes are cast by absentee ballot. In 2020, there were 35 percent of all the ballots were cast absentee ballots. That's because it was the year of COVID sure. and no one wanted to go to the polls. So now I think it'll be somewhere in between that. And we know that by this morning, there were about, we can tell now how many have been filed statewide, about almost 150,000. Um, well, I mean, and that's, that's significant number. because if you have yep. a close race, like for example, the gubernatorial race between Bob Stefanowski and Ned Lamont four years ago, it was a 44,000 vote difference, so 150,000 votes. So there's a, there's possibility that we might not know all of the results tonight if it comes down to the absentee ballots in certain races. That's exactly right. Yeah, it has to be if it's a close race. If it's not a close race, obviously, you can do the math. I mean, it won't matter. So. And it's interesting because because of COVID, you all were able to have a rule made where you could open those absentee ballots before that 8 p.m. close, but that's no longer in play, right? No, that's right. That was only for that 2020 election, and, and that has sunsetted. And that's why some of the other states, they every state has different rules, right? Yes. So like <laughs> Pennsylvania, they're not allowed to touch their absentee ballots at all until polls close, or at least day of election day. Right. In other places, they're allowed to start at least opening the envelope, and, and it's a process you don't really think about, but it takes a long time. A long time. To verify everything. And, and you have states like California where they have to keep accepting absentee ballots after Election Day. Oh, wow. Like a week after Election Day because they want to make sure they count every last ballot. So that really delays the results. So I think you'll see that in play this year. And how long do registrars have to tell the state of Connecticut results? That's another thing. They have 48 hours. We gave them extra time because we knew there were so many absentee ballots they would need that time. Now, usually they don't take that long. So that's why when you see our statewide results uh, posted on the internet, which it comes in real time. So as soon as those results are posted uh, by the town, it appears on the screen. So if anyone wants to see in actual time when that's being posted, you can just go to our website. And I know in past years there were some glitches and we weren't able to get those results. I know you're not Secretary of the State right now, but do you think the, the, those kinks have been worked out where if someone at home wanted to go and look at the results, they'd be up? Oh, yes, yes, okay. but uh, it, was, it was always a problem that people didn't understand that it has to be posted by the town before it shows up on our site. Sure, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Hey, Fox 61 will also have your results, so you can check out um, <laughs> us online. Former Secretary of the State, Denise Merrill, so great to have you in studio. Thanks for taking the time to come in Thank and you, lend us your expertise. <laughs> nice to be back. Ben, back to you. All right, Jen, thank you. Well, today is the day to make sure that your vote counts. This year, there's a lot to decide on the ballots. What are the midterms? Midterm elections take place halfway through a president's four-year term. The election's considered a referendum on how Americans are feeling about the first half of a president's term and a chance for the minority party to flip the balance of power in Washington. While voters aren't electing a new president, there are federal, state, and local seats contested. All 435 House seats are up for election as representatives serve two-year terms. Senators, on the other hand, serve six-year terms, and their election years are staggered. So approximately one-third of the Senate's up for election every two years. This year, 35 of the 100 seats in the Senate will be elected. 36 states will elect a governor this year. What's at stake? Even though President Joe Biden isn't on the ballot, the midterm elections will play a big role in what the president can accomplish in the final two years of his current term. One of the largest questions is whether Democrats will hold their narrow majority in Congress. Analysts predict Republicans have a chance to take back both the House and the Senate. Historically, the party in power tends to lose seats during midterm elections. Since 1934, the president's party has lost an average of 28 House seats and four Senate seats during midterm elections. This year, Republicans only need to pick up one seat in the Senate to take back a majority. And as a reminder, if you're currently in line at your polling site, don't get out of line. Again, polls closed at 8 o'clock, but if for some reason you are still in that line or you know someone that is, tell them, they can stay in there as long as they were in it at 8 o'clock. Well, as we cross Connecticut tonight are getting some Election Day insights, we want to go to Manchester, continue our live team coverage. Fox 61's Jim Altman, live at Manchester High School. Jimmy, polls closed at 8 o'clock, polling locations, and uh, is there any action still in Manchester? What's the scene? There, there is, Ben. The, the polls closed, and uh, the number crunching has 
begun here. Uh, you can see uh, the, the staff here, they've been here since 5 o'clock this morning, now tabulating all the votes. That's actually what's happening. I've done this job a long time. I've actually never been part of this before, where you get to actually see this going on. Interesting enough. Also as interesting, always interesting, is Jay Moran, the mayor of Manchester. We got to Manchester this afternoon. We were, I was in West Hartford today. I was in Hartford. And then we came to your fair city. And look, it, it was, I thought, I think you're probably pleased with, with what's happened here today. It seemed very smooth today, Jay. Yeah, it's very smooth. And again, we thank all those poll workers behind us across the state and across the country. Yeah, it's great. We had a great day. No, no, I don't think there's many glitches, if that may be minor ones. We had about, uh, we were down a little numbers in 2018, the last gubernatorial election. But uh, from a blue side, I think we did very well in Manchester. The results from I saw here in this booth, uh, the Democrats did well here. So You and I usually talk about races, right, every right. Thanksgiving. Road, road, races. road races. Yes, road Absolutely. races. We're talking about political races tonight. What are you looking at tonight and how do you think this is all going to go? You know a lot of people who are running tonight. They are close personal friends of yes. yours. Um, how do you think this is going to go tonight? Well, I know and let's talk about the fifth. Let's, uh, well, the fifth is going to be tight, I think. But I think, uh, I think the governor is going to win. I think it's going to be a blue wave. And I'm hoping uh, Johanna Hayes in the fifth will, will take some of those votes and do well. It's going to be tight there. But I think it's going to be a big blue wave, as usual, in the state of Connecticut. And let's talk about we wake up tomorrow, Jay. And you're, you've always been an advocate for just getting along and, and harmony, really, if we can do that. Yeah, it's tough across the country and across the state. There's a, you know, the atmosphere of politics right now. But I think tomorrow we get up, we pick up the lawn signs. No more of those commercials. Those I'm going to miss those, commercials. yes, yeah. And we go together and we roll up the sleeves and we, people have to govern and do what's best for the people in the state of Connecticut because people in the state are still, you know, the, and we're going through inflation. We want to know what's going on. We want to make sure our schools are doing well. And we're still we're slowly and almost out of this thing called COVID. So, but we're still working on it. So. All right, Jay. Well, thank, we appreciate your time. Thank you, and thank for you for your here. hospitality. And uh, I'm guessing I will see you I'll in the weeks ahead. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank For now, you. we're live at Manchester High School, guys. We'll send it back to you in Hartford. Thank you, Jimmy. All right, the polls have been closed just about a half hour or so. Time now to check in live with Fox 61 New Haven County Bureau reporter Tony Terzi for a look at some of what he encountered today in the greater New Haven area. Tony, can you hear us? And what are you seeing? Yeah, lots of crowds, Jan and Ben. Good evening, everyone, here on the East Shore in New Haven at the um, Nathan Hale School. And it's one of the busier sites in the city, voting sites. And the moderator here today told us that it was very busy. In fact, as busy as it's been in a few years, a great deal of interest. Now, we know what the politicians think about some of the key issues, and those being abortion rights and border security. But what about what's important to voters here in Connecticut? Well, choice, pro-choice, democracy, and um, I'm not really for election deniers. Our right to vote is our right to vote, and when you vote, accept their results. Obviously, um, inflation is important to a lot of people, uh, gas prices, that sort of thing. I mean, I know that uh, there's a lot of issues nowadays with the uh, global warming. So, so, you know, I understand the, the need to move to a uh, different kind of power, but we need to prepare better and to, you know, have a better transition. I don't think the transition is going very well. We can't stop drilling before we have all the electric in place. Now, one of the more interesting finds today was the fact that curbside voting is legal in Connecticut. Who knew? If you're physically unable to make it into a polling place, a registrar from each party will come out and wait for you as you fill out your ballot um, in your car. So that's good to know for future elections. Now, of course, there is a question on the ballot about whether or not we should approve a constitutional amendment to permit early voting. Well, even if Connecticut voters voted in favor of that, which is what was expected, 
uh, that can't go forward right away because there's been a legal challenge by a person from New Britain who actually filed a lawsuit yesterday saying that this amendment would be unlawful. And we'll tell you more about that in the coming days. We're live in New Haven. I'm Tony Terzi, Fox 61 News. All right, Tony, thank you very much. We want to get over to Keith McGilvery because we're starting to see results coming. Yeah, numbers already coming in. Let's go to Keith and uh, Wes Renfro from Quinnipiac at the Big Board. Hey, guys. Ben and Jen, 8 o'clock, the magic hour here in Connecticut. We have seen it before. Those results are starting to come in. Wes, it is good to have you with us. It's nice to have some action on the board to talk about. So if we can go ahead and take this full. Granted, we were at 5 percent of precincts reporting just four percent of the overall vote in uh, and at this point some 5,300 votes separating these two candidates initial thoughts you know this is still very early but I don't find these results surprising at all and if we take this full can we take this full just as we move around um, we can actually break this down all the way to specific communities. So if we look at some of these communities, are there parts of the station state rather that you would see going red maybe more than another part of the state? You know, I think it's really important to see what happens down in New Haven and some of the other cities. We're starting to see some uh, 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 blue votes there. But given the distribution of voters, they will be key to Ned Lamont's re-election. Re and if we toss on over to the U.S. Senate race again, uh, this race has already been called. We're just seeing uh, just north of 3,000 votes coming in, but again, your initial reaction to that call and what we're seeing? Yeah, I mean, I think it's likely that uh, Leora Levy's uh, share of the vote will increase, but I don't think that she will ever come close and that this is a safe call by the AP. How quickly do you anticipate seeing this board start to fill in, do you think? You know, I think within the next 90 minutes or so, we're really going to have a very strong sense of most of the races. All right, and then just quickly, because I have you, I don't want to get lost in the conversation. Proposition 1, early voting in Connecticut. We've seen millions turn out in other localities uh, across the country. Is this a, a sure thing moving forward here, do you think? You know, we don't have a lot of high quality polling on this particular issue, but I think that the fundamentals of this state favor a successful outcome. All right, this board will continue to fill in. We'll see lots of red and blue throughout the night, Jen and Ben, but there's something about 8 o'clock here in Connecticut that starts to get that job done. Fun starts at 8. All right, Keith, thank you very much, Keith and Wes. We want to continue our live team coverage now and head out to Hartford at Dunkin' Donuts Park and take a look at the governor's race. Yeah, Emma Wolforest is live with the governor, Governor Lamont's camp, uh, giving us an update on what you are seeing there. Emma. Jen, Ben, that's right. I'm here at Dunkin' Donuts Park where multiple state Democrat candidates are having a joint watch party. Now, just a few minutes ago, I spoke with someone, one of Lamont's campaign managers. He told me the governor is currently watching race results come in with his family and will not come out to speak to supporters here until his race is called. Now, we talked to him last earlier this morning. Lamont said he was confident and feeling good heading into tonight, hoping to secure a victory against Republican challenger Bob Stefanowski. These two ran against each other previously in 2018, Lamont winning there by about 44,000 votes. We'll see as results start to trickle in uh, about a half an hour, 40 minutes since polls last closed. We'll see if he's able to secure that win again. We have the band picking up behind me. Lots more supporters here in the past hour and a half since doors opened. So as we know more, we'll let you know. Just to reiterate again, I was told by Lamont's campaign he's currently watching race results come in with his family and will come out to speak to supporters here once his race is called. We'll keep following that for you for now. Live in Hartford, Emma Wolforst, Fox 61 News. Continue to check back in with you, Emma. All right, thank you. Down in Fairfield County, Republican opponent Bob Stefanowski looking to rally his supporters and defeat Governor Lamont. Fox 61's Gabby Molina live in Trumbull tonight with more for us. Ga Gabby. Hey, Ben and Jen. Yeah, the room is pretty much full here now at the Trumbull Marriott for a GOP election night watch party. And I'm joined right now by GOP chairman Ben Proto. We're talking about uh, the Republican candidate here for Governor Bob Stefanowski. Tell me how you guys are feeling about it tonight. The polls are closed now, so it's done. People have voted. And uh, why, um, why are you feeling that way? Uh, we're feeling really good right now. As you know, we look across the state, we're seeing uh, really good turnout in Republican towns. We're seeing lackluster turnout in Democratic areas. 
Uh, so I think that bodes well for Republicans. I've been traveling around the state all day today to various polling places, talking with voters. They're very angry. They're very concerned. They're very scared about where this uh, economy is going. They want change. Uh, and I think that's going to be reflected in the vote totals that we're going to see tonight. And tell me a little bit about, I mean, what's going on here behind us. What's the energy like in the room at this point? I think the energy is very high. People are having a good time. It's a lot of fun. Uh, people are excited about, I think, what, what's going to be coming down the pike. We've got a great congressional race going up in the 5th District right now. Uh, I think Bob is in a great position uh, going forward. Uh, I don't know that we'll have final results tonight, uh, but I do think that we're going to see some uh, interesting movement on the Republican side. I'm anticipating we're going to pick up seats in the House and the, and the Senate and the state legislature, so I'm looking forward to a really good night for Republicans. Thank you so much for your time, Ben. Appreciate it. Anytime, so, Gabby. As uh, results start to come in, stay with Fox 61. We're bringing you live updates all election night long. Live in Trumbull, Gabby Molina, Fox 61 News. Gabby, thank you very much. The polls now closed, and we are watching those votes get tallied across the state. Uh, candidates across Connecticut sitting anxiously awaiting uh, your choice for decision 2022. And one of the races that we know the Associated Press has already called is for U.S. Senate Richard Blumenthal. Let's check in right now with Fox 61's Matt Karen covering the Blumenthal campaign in Dunkin' Donuts Park. Hi, Matt. Hi, guys. Uh, you came to us at a good time because I'm looking at the entrance here. I did just see a glimpse of Senator Richard Blumenthal. Uh, we were told that he's going to be walking to the podium here at any moment as the band still plays behind us. Uh, we now know and we, we see Chris Murphy alongside him. Chris Murphy uh, is the other senator from Connecticut, the other incumbent Democrat. Uh, who was out at the polls today campaigning with Senator Blumenthal pretty much all of the day. Senator Blumenthal has been reelected to a third term in the United States Senate. He is 76 years old. Let's go over. Can we go over there? Uh, it looks like they're doing something over there, Manny. We might have, you guys might just have to follow us here if you want to stay with us for a second. Senator Blumenthal appears to be speaking, so we're going to see if we can go over to that. We're just going to have to move some equipment here. Let's go. Ah, oh, we can't go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what's going on. Apparently, from what we hear. Yeah. And we know just about as much as you do. <laughs> Senator Blumenthal is speaking in that room. We're going to try to get Matt over there and, and hear what he has to say. Of course, that race already called by the AP uh, for Senator Blumenthal. Yeah, it is. And we have a lot of video, apparently, of Senator Blumenthal right now. I think everyone in are. Connecticut knows what Richard we, Blumenthal we looks do. like. We do. Everyone knows what <laughs> Senator Richard Blumenthal looks like here. Okay, so it sounds like uh, we're going to go over to his challenger right here. Uh, are, we going to, are we going, are we going to Trumbull? We can try to go to Trumbull right Let's now. Let's try. Okay, Let's see what happens. Um, we have right now, okay, yeah. we are Tony Black at Laura Levy's watch party in Trumbull. Tony, what are you seeing Hi, Tony. over there? Have they found out the news? <laughs> yeah, I would say the news has been slowly trickling in, but I really wouldn't say it's hit this watch party just yet. I think it's a little bit more difficult when this is overall a GOP watch party. So they have voters for Stefanowski here. Um, but overall, I really just don't think that this has hit uh, Lior Levy's loss. Um, but we're going to go back to you guys in the studio. Okay. All right. The news is hit. Oh, we want to go back to Matt. And uh, we see Senator Blumenthal uh, embracing some people here. Matt, can you hear us? All right, I think Matt's probably having a lot of trouble hearing us. It is so loud in there right now um, yeah. where he is, but obviously Senator Richard Blumenthal right now kind of taking a victory lap here. We haven't heard yet. It looks like he's about to declare victory. We have no idea, though. It doesn't sound like Laura Levy has conceded. All we know at this point is that the Associated Press rather has called the race for Senator Richard Blumenthal, and you are looking at him um, walking amongst the crowd here. Yeah, you know, I think we, uh, we're just about to wait to hear him speak. Maybe we should try to listen in uh, one more time. Nobody surprises me these days about elections, but I'm just grateful. So we're ready for a big night tonight, Decisive. right? Decisive. 
I'm going to have to go up here. We are so proud of all of the volunteers, all go of the Go up to the stage. Activists. Our Matt Karen is there waiting uh, to see what Senator Blumenthal says. Again, if you're just joining us here on Fox 61 Plus, uh, the race has been called for U.S. Senate for Senator Blumenthal right now. His counterpart, Senator Chris Murphy, at the podium. Can we listen into this? Dick Blumenthal was declared the winner of this Senate race at 8.01 tonight. <laughs> I have had the privilege, I have had the privilege of serving with Dick Blumenthal in the United States Senate over the course of the last 10 years. And I know Dick Blumenthal to be exactly who you know him to be, a fighter on behalf of the little guy, someone who is unafraid to take on special interests, corporations, no matter how powerful, no matter how influential they may be, instrumental in passing the Bipartisan Gun Safety Act, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act. Maybe the most vocal champion for our veterans in the United States Senate today. And someone who has taught Connecticut a kind of courageous public service over the course of his career. From his days as a U.S. attorney to the state legislature to his career as a pioneering attorney general. No one has fought harder, more consistently for Connecticut families over the past three decades than Dick Blumenthal. And I have had the honor of getting to do this job with him. I have had the honor of fighting on behalf of Connecticut alongside him. Um, and I have a simple job here today to say thank you for all that you have done to make this big victory possible um, and to introduce to you the current and continuing the next senator from the state of Connecticut, my great friend Dick Blumenthal. And I have the simple task of introducing Cynthia Blumenthal. Uh, who is responsible for my being here with you today. Uh, I have so many thanks to give. Uh, first of all, to my great colleague and partner and friend, Chris Murphy, for all of the great work he has done on gun safety, on foreign relations, on health care and education. He has been a leader, and I've been proud to be a partner and colleague of his, and we're going to continue that work together. Thank you to the Democrats of Connecticut. Thank you to all, every one of the Democrats, especially Nancy DiNardo, our chairwoman. Thanks to the working people and the working party, the working family party of Connecticut, my union brothers and sisters. Thank you for the difference you have made fighting for everyday people in Connecticut. My team here, my team in Washington, D.C., you have made me so proud. But let me just say uh, to all the people who voted for me and all the people who didn't vote for me, I am going to continue fighting tirelessly, relentlessly, against special interests, no matter how big and powerful, all too often those special interests get their way. My job has been always to stand up for them, and it has never been more important than now. Because of the rising costs of inflation, because of the efforts on the part of Republicans to decimate Social Security and Medicare, and because so much is at stake, including women's reproductive rights and freedoms, and we are going to restore them. So I'm going to pledge to you that I will fight to protect and preserve Social Security and Medicare, but also lower taxes, cut inflation, 
and fight for the people of Connecticut, putting them first. I also think we need to bring the country together. We need to make sure that we put Connecticut first, put America first, reach across the aisle where possible, but when the fight comes, I will be there for you, and the fight will be coming. It will be more difficult now than before, but we need to stand together, and I will stand with you to fight for the people of Connecticut. Thank you so much to all of you on this occasion. And in case anybody had any doubt, I am fired up, I'm ready to fight, and we begin now to keep going, working and fighting for the people of Connecticut. I've never been prouder to serve you, and I have never been more grateful than for this opportunity to continue this battle. Thank you all. Okay, you heard it right there, our first victory speech here in Connecticut. U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal getting a third term, a six-year term. He will head back to Washington to represent Connecticut. I want to bring in our guests here, Chris Matty and Themis Claris, joining us live in studio to react to this in real time. This is the first race of the night that was called. Uh, no real surprises here. Guys, Themis, I'll go to you first. You know, the, the difficulty with this race for me is that you look at what's going on in this country in the state with inflation and people having to choose between groceries and gas and and being afraid to live in their neighborhoods and a lot of that has come from president biden and the democrats that are running you know washington and unfortunately dick blumenthal is part of that and people were ready for a change they were ready for a change unfortunately they didn't feel that this was the change they wanted um, and he got reelected. but i don't think it's any surprise um, that the results were as they were Chris, I, I want to go to you now. You know, his challenger, Leora Levy, had blamed Biden's policies um, uh, on the economy and said that inflation was caused by Biden's policies and also said that uh, U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal was a rubber stamp for President Biden. Your reaction to that? Well, I think what you're seeing in this result is that Connecticut voters are a lot smarter than that. You know, I, I don't think they believe what Leora Levy was saying. I don't think they agree with, uh, respectfully, what Themis was just saying. I think that they see a president who saw the inflation, reacted quickly with the Inflation Reduction Act, which has brought uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars of investment to the state of Connecticut. They see somebody like Richard Blumenthal, who's fighting for them down there. They know that there are uh, situations in Ukraine with the supply chain that have led to some inflationary issues. And they know that thanks to the leadership of people like Dick Blumenthal and like Ned Lamont, who has prepared us well to weather this, um, that, that those are the people that they want to see in charge. You know, they, they didn't want to take a chance on Leora Levy. They didn't want to take a chance uh, on somebody who had embraced Donald Trump. They know that uh, Biden's policies are working and are going to get us out of this, and they know that Richard Blumenthal is going to be right there alongside him. Uh, we do want to continue talking about this, but right now we want to continue our live team coverage. All eyes not only on the governor's race and the U.S. Senate race, but especially on the very tight 5th Congressional District race here for the House of Representatives. Voters tonight deciding who they want in that seat, whether it's going to be incumbent Johanna Hayes or her Republican opponent, George Logan. We want to head out to Fox 60 with Carmen Chow, who is keeping tabs on the outcome. She is in Waterbury now with more. Carmen, how's it looking? Well, then again, it's looking great. Those doors officially opened at 830. So we were able to walk in. As you can see, the music is playing. So we're just jamming out while we're waiting for more guests to flood. And there's about seven tables here and a buffet of some delicious food that I can smell from where I'm standing here. You can see there's a podium for when Johanna arrives where she'll be ready to give her speech. Now, this is the race where it really is unpredictable. You know, votes can come in favoring one candidate, but that scale can easily be tipped because we've been seeing equal support on both parties. Now, according to the latest poll released by the Hill Survey, WTNH and Emerson College, it has showed Logan has a one-point lead over Johanna Hayes, but keep in mind there's also a percentage of undecided voters, voters identifying the economy as the most important issue and determining their votes, followed by abortion and threats to democracy. Now, both candidates favor a woman's right to an abortion as is currently guaranteed by state law, and Hayes favors a similar federal law while Logan feels otherwise. 
And again, back out here alive, still seeing some supporters flood into this room and no sighting of Johanna just yet. Uh, I was just told by her press person, we're not exactly sure when she might get here, but hopefully soon. And again, we are keeping an eye on those votes coming in. And once we do get some of those results, I'll be sure to pass it along to the newsroom. But for now, I'll see you later at 10 o'clock. Live in Waterbury, Carmen Chow, Fox 61 News. Carmen, thank you very much. And we want to continue covering the fifth congressional seat race. Fox 61's DeAndrea Turner joining us live at Verde at Western Hills, where George Logan's supporters are gathering behind her. Hi, DeAndrea. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Well, the atmosphere here, they're excited. They know that this is a well-talked-about race across the nation and right here in Connecticut. And Logan himself, he's not here yet, but you can see behind me that a ton of his supporters are already here. They're waiting patiently. You know how this thing goes. It's a wait-and-see game just to see how those numbers come in. And they just want to know to see if it's going to be a victory for the Republican Party. And if it is, it, this means that he is going to be the first Republican congressman who takes on this in the first in 13 years and people here tell me that they're excited and they're hoping for change for now here in Waterbury D'Andrea Turner Fox 61 News all right everyone in both camps just kind of sitting and waiting especially looking at that fifth congressional yes. district race I want to go over to Keith McGilvery and Wes Renfro guys I think who controls the House of Representatives is on the mind of all voters in Connecticut but especially across the country Indeed, and I want to pick up where Deandre and Carmen left off talking about this 5th District race. If you joined us about two minutes ago, this would have been red. It has shifted since blue. That is the fun part about politics, tracking this all. want to be careful to point out here that only 9% of precincts reported, only 7% of the vote. But as we look at it here, Johanna Hayes, the congresswoman, uh, leading by some 304 votes. If we can take this full what I want to do is kind of walk you through the power of what our reporting system is able to do. Uh, get your general reactions as we go community by community. You can see Hayes leading here in Kent. When we move down to Roxbury, she is leading there as well by some 162 votes. Transitioning to a community like Warren, we're seeing Republican George Logan lead there. And in Morris, uh, Logan is leading by some 240 votes as well. So a small number of votes in at this point, but what is it saying to you at least right now? It's a little early to draw any conclusions. I think that we'll feel more comfortable with the trajectory of this race when we start to see results from some of the urban centers. All right, and because we have you, I wanna go back to some of these other races uh, we are following if we can. Why don't you start talking about the race for governor that we've been looking at and kind of what you have seen uh, on that front as we get this board here to cooperate with us. Uh, so the numbers thus far sort of confirm expectations. Ned Lamont is leading by a healthy margin. He is leading in the areas where we expect him to lead. Um, you know, we'll feel much more confident with more uh, results coming in, but it looks as expected right now. All right, the nature of the board not fully cooperating, that is okay. When we saw the acceptance speech there from Richard Blumenthal seeking a third or, or now getting a third term as a U.S. Senator, uh, what are your thoughts to what he had to say? He says he's in this fight. You know, Richard Blumenthal is a pretty good speaker. He's well known. I don't think that he delivered any surprise remarks, a very uh, standard Democratic message, but one that works for him in Connecticut. All right, some important information there. Uh, as the night progresses, what are you keeping your eye on for here? What is your overall gut when it comes to voter turnout, turnout at large? So we're starting to see some signs that voter turnout will be okay in the historical range, but will be less than we saw in 2018 and in 2020 for sure. Um, you know, we're starting to see some evidence that it looks like the House is perhaps going to trend towards the Republicans, and the Senate is still very much a toss-up. All right. Any key races you're watching on that front? We saw Pennsylvania. We're talking about Wisconsin, Georgia. Tons of money flooding in there as well. Yeah, so I think the first race that we need to pay attention to is New Hampshire. If Maggie Hassan holds onto her seat, and we should know that relatively early, that's probably a sign that we're not looking at a Republican blowout. That doesn't mean they won't end up in control of the Senate. Some of those other races we're going to wait much longer for, either because we're not counting early votes yet or because they're on the West Coast. All right. Uh, as we kind of continue to keep an eye on this, want to let folks know you're with us throughout the evening. If you have questions, send them our way. Share61 at fox61.com for some insight 
on all of this. Uh, big picture, what do you think we're going to know by the end of the night tonight? What do you think we might be waiting for for tomorrow morning? You know, it's really, I think, going to come down to places like Pennsylvania, where it might take quite a long time to count those votes. If everything is tight in those other races, a few unknowns, we might be waiting for a couple days, but we'll know more soon. All right, and because we're ending the magic board in the 5th District, I will bring you back to this front. Are you going to make a call? What is your gut telling you as to how this unfolds? You know, I am a numbers guy, and we do not have enough numbers right now, and so we just have to wait. All right, a smart move. Appreciate your insight. You will be with us at 10 and 11 o'clock. Jen and Ben, things just starting to get interesting over here at the big board. And a smart answer. The numbers just don't tell the story Gotta quite wait. yet. Gotta West wait. Keith, thank you. As a result, keep pouring in. Keep with Fox 61 for updates on the big races here in the state and around the country. Yeah, we're going to be following all the races closely and bring you any results as they come into our newsroom. For minute-to-minute -minute updates, you can check our website, fox61.com.